Hi, I'm Joy from Special Fork. Stir frying is actually a really easy, simple, and healthy way to cook. So today we're going to be showing you some basic techniques and tips on how to do it. Today we're going to be using chicken. Um, you can feel free to use any protein you like. Beef or pork is also really good for stir fries. And um, what we want to do first is kind of create a simple marinade to go with it, just to kind of give it a little bit of flavor. So we're going to go with soy sauce. And I have some black sesame oil here. And some minced ginger. I also have just a little pinch of salt, sugar, and cornstarch. The cornstarch will kind of bind everything together, so just give it a good mix to just incorporate everything. Make sure the cornstarch is well mixed in there. And once you kind of get everything combined, you can pop it in the fridge for about 10-15 minutes and we'll be ready to go. So we have our chicken nicely marinated and I also have the pan preheated. Um, make sure your stove is on high and that your pan is completely dry. You just want to make sure to avoid any steaming during the cooking process. So I'm going to go ahead and start by putting a little bit of oil in here. And you want to make sure to coat the pan completely. Now once the oil is hot, we can go ahead and add half of the minced garlic. And once you hear that sizzle, you know that your pan is nicely heated. The one thing you do want to make sure is that you don't overcook your garlic. Now, because the pan is really hot, it does tend to cook really fast, and that's when you can go ahead and add your chicken. You just want to go ahead and just kind of make sure they're not in clumps. You don't want to stir it too much. You kind of want to get a nice, even crust on the chicken before you turn it over. And because the pan is really hot, it'll cook pretty quickly. So you kind of flip it over and start seeing the caramelized side. So once you probably get about three-fourths of the way cooked, basically when you don't see any pink in the meat, you know you're not ready to move on to your next step. So the chicken is pretty much cooked all the way through. If you don't see any pink, you know you're ready to move on. I have asparagus here, and you can really use any type of vegetables that you like. I'm using asparagus today. So just go ahead and put it in. With the asparagus, I kind of cut it in the diagonal just so we can get more cooking surface on it. So you can get more of an even, even cooking. And you just want to make sure to have all of your vegetables and ingredients cooked or cut into even uniform size just so you can make sure they all cook at the same time. So once you get that going in there, you can go ahead and add the rest of your garlic. I like to add the garlic in halfway through just so you can kind of get that nice fresh garlic flavor. If you add it in all in the beginning, you kind of tend to lose that. So give it another good stir. Now with the asparagus, you kind of want to just look out to have it cook maybe halfway when it's a little bit kind of a rich, deep color, but you don't want to overcook it when it becomes limp. You want to maintain that crisp texture throughout. So now we're ready to move on to the last thing. We're going to add the mushrooms in. And I add the mushrooms in last because it actually doesn't require a lot of cooking time. So with whatever ingredients you choose, you want to make sure that you know which ones take longer to cook and you want to be sure to add those in first and save the ones that don't require a lot of cooking time for the last. So just give it a good stir. And then we can add just a pinch of salt for taste. 
And we add the salt in at the very end because it tends to draw out the moisture and the vegetables and you want to avoid doing that. Otherwise, again, you'll create kind of a steaming, braising action. So give it another good stir. And I think we're ready to add the hoisin sauce. For those of you who've never used hoisin sauce before, it has a nice, sweet, a little bit of spice to it. And it kind of coats everything and binds it together. So just give it a good mix. And with hoisin, you can find it in your international aisle at the grocery store or in your local Asian market. So we'll just give that another good stir. And we can turn off the heat. It'll just continue to cook down a little bit. And I think we're ready to go. That's it.